Earl Grey. Who'd have thought 50 years ago that we'd all be sitting around the table drinking Earl Grey? Not I. Nor I. I scoff. The thought of it. Indeed. But we were happier in those days, even though we were scientifically illiterate. Because we were scientifically illiterate. Indeed. My old dad used to say to me, Son, scientific enlightenment can't help you understand the Orphic mysteries. And he was right, you know. Of course, we barely knew what scientific literacy meant. We used to get up at four in the morning, three hours after we went to bed, crawl our way out of our hovel to go down to the shop to press our faces against the filthy, crusty glass of the bookstore in the next town over, wondering what it would be like to hold a copy of Sidereus Nuncius and learn about the scientific revolution of Galilean heliocentrism. Well, of course, we had it tough. We didn't even know what a book was. And I still don't. We used to wake up out of our shoebox in the road at three in the morning, two hours after we went to bed, walk 20 miles through the freezing rain to a hole inside of hill where we got all our education out of one shell-shocked Greek who considered Ptolemy and epicycles to be the out of scientific advancement. And when we got home, our dad would beat us for straying from the teachings of Anaximander. We used to dream about being able to catch a glimpse of De Nova Stella through the back door of a public library in Barnsley. Luxury. You can crawl about Tychonic quintessence and Ptolemyan epicycles until you're blue in the face, but it didn't change the fact that those of us, not blessed with a classical Greek education, had to wake up at 10.30, half an hour before we went to sleep, to wade 30 miles through liquid hot magma on the surface of Venus to get our scientific edification out of the tribal shaman who told us that the sky was made up of the hide of Tiamat, mother of monsters, before throwing vicious rats at us. And we thanked him for it. If you told astronomy students that today, they'd look at you with extreme skepticism. Aye, they wouldn't believe you.